Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk you through a solution where I was inspired from a blog post and a customer client situation where essentially, if you look in front of you here, we had a situation where we had a series of dates and in this term, a document date and a series of transaction IDs. Now these were paired with essentially some type of debits or credits and an inning balance. Now, when sorting this way in a matrix table, one, we need at the moment as a limitation to include a transaction ID basically because these provide the highest transaction ID which pairs to the last inning balance of the day. Now, the client specifically didn't want this to show up into here so we needed to figure out a solution on how to create and add the sort logic into the visualization, reverse the order and display it into a final form of something like this, where we have the date, we have the final row at the top with that value, but no additional information being shown. So I wanna show you the techniques to be able to do that, ensure the correct sort order as you've seen there and get everything working in a way that essentially removes the need to show that additional ID for sorting purposes. So with that being said, let's hop into Power BI and get started. Now I do want to give a shout out to Daniel here. He did have the article that I came across because I remember somebody writing about how to do invisible sorting and he had one that talked about using, in this case, the Unicar character 8203, which is a non printable character that essentially allows you to add an invisible sort to a column. So thanks for the article, Daniel. Um, and this is what I got inspired from to essentially do the logic that I'll be showing you. So coming back to Power BI, in this case, again, coming from the start, what we have here is a date and then a series of transaction IDs. Now, the smallest transaction ID is essentially the first transaction of the day. The largest is the last one of the day. Now, ideally, I would like the latest to actually be at the top because doc date is sorting descending. I would also like this to sort descending. Now with a normal table, you can do something where if I was to come here, convert it, you can do the nested sort and being able to actually have something where you could have the largest at the top, but that doesn't work with a matrix table. There's no options to be able to do that. You have to pick one or the other. So two problems to solve. One, I want to be able to remove transaction ID and have that level work with region, city, and holdings. Now, if I just take transaction ID out, obviously we now start getting groups that doesn't really work. I have issues with the data. So I need one row per transaction ID without showing the transaction ID and in the reversed order. So coming to the end result here, this now is doing exactly as I just mentioned, where we have region, city, and holdings. There's no extra groupings. It actually does keep a distinct set of rows in here. And it took the last row that I had previously and now puts it at the top. So this is the newest, second newest, third newest, and so on. So final result that we see here. Now, all I had to do is actually create, in this case, a special column using that formula that we saw with uh, Daniel's blog article. Now I'll start with the first one that was actually slow just to show you this. So I took his pattern. I used the repeating of the non printable character of this, where it, what it will do is it actually adds a number of spaces equal to the transaction ID that does create a sort order that will work properly with those non printable characters. Now, the problem with this is this one's actually very, very slow. If this transaction ID, let's say is 20,500, you will get 20,500 non printable characters put into that column. That column itself now is very expensive for storage and it actually ended up massively slowing it down. The article that I got inspired from was doing this on months with significantly less values to sort by. So that problem wasn't apparent there. So this does work, but let's come over to the performance comparison and let's do a quick performance analysis of the two of these. So I'm going to refresh clear Refresh the visuals here. Notice how my fast performance visual took about a second to load. The slow performance one, which is the original column, it's still loading. The gears are still turning and I'm gonna do a bit of auto magic and fast forward us. Okay, now it shows 18 seconds. So significantly different. That's a 15 X difference between the two performance of these. So what I did to get the correct column to do the sorting, but also work a lot faster is I converted the rank 
or better said, the transaction ID to a ranked value. So I have, it actually, let me change. This is, this is an ascending rank. There we are. So I have an ascending rank here that basically just takes the transaction ID per date. And instead of providing the original ID, it provides the rank. So let's assume there are 25 transactions in a day. I will get a rank between one to 25. So now when I'm repeating this uni, uh, unicar character, it's only going to be a significantly smaller number of printable times versus the original transaction ID. So it is optimized and drastically improved the speed of that. So that's the only difference. This is the same base pattern. I've just converted the original value to a rank, which gives me the same look and feel, but as we just saw with this performance analyzer, a massive difference in performances. But it is something that I find uh, useful when there are times that you need to do special sorts. Notice, by the way, that every row in here in this hierarchy region is getting a unique row, even though south does repeat, because technically this south has a different a uh, unique value than this one. So those row um, counts basically will continue to match the number of unique transactions on that date. But because we did ascending here rather than descending, that ensures it goes to the top. If I change this, let's just change this to uh, DS, DESC, just to show you the flip of that. Now if I do that, there we go, it puts it at the bottom. So just depending on which order you would like to display it in, you can choose either ascending or descending. But I think this is a very useful technique to have, and it gets that value of being able to have that invisible sorting in your data. Now, I would urge caution to make sure that you probably add a secondary column for this. This does need to be done in DAX, by the way. You can't, as far as I'm aware, do this in Power Query. You might be able to, so if anybody is aware of that, drop that into the comments below, but DAX was the easiest because that's where all the blog patterns were. Um, but overall, it's served a purpose, accomplished a goal, and allowed me to keep a granularity visible in the hierarchy and add that custom sort order that was needed. Otherwise, if you have any comments, suggestions, please drop that into the comments down below, as well as any suggestions for a future video. Check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. And I'll see you all in my next video.